to Yep. See the stream. See if the volume is good. Yeah. See the stream. Yep. Volume is a okay. Tasa Bashar is there. Tasa Bashar is there. Hey, Shalawa, Mark, Yao, Yao, Shabba, Shalawa, Yao, Bashim, Yao, Shabba, Bashim, Rakatadash, Rakatah. Done. Done. Sound is good. Yes. So we're back here again. You know, uh, going back to the basics. Me and this brother, me, I'm Kwatasab Zayan, and the brother. Tell my yad. We are trying to, you know, bring back the, the basics, you know, so that our people that are coming in into this truth, that they have the, the milk scriptures, that they have the understanding of the scriptures. So this is going to be a, a part two, an edifying part two of the chariots and the clouds of the Most High. So before we start, we want to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh. Yahweh. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, yeah, man. So last time, last episode, we went into the clouds. You know how Yahweh is going to come with the clouds and that we're going to be, uh, we, we have need to be outside of the firmament looking in onto this, the destruction, which is the sea of glass. You know, the firmament is uh, written down as a sea of glass. And we have to be saved by the chariots, man. When Yahweh Shai comes with his chariots, that's our, 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 the manifestation of our salvation. But Yahweh, he also uh, um, wrote in the scriptures certain things to show you how, how uh, the chariots look how the chariots act, how the chariots manifest themselves, you know. And today we're going to go into a couple of examples of that. And we're going to start with Ezekiel 1. Okay. So if you could give me Ezekiel 1 and 3. Okay. This is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 3. The word of the Lord came ex expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Shabar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Come on. So if you go into Lashawan Kodash in the Hebrew, then the, the name Ezekiel in the Lashawan Kodash, it's Yahazak Allah, which the outline of biblical usage says, the Most High strengthens, Yahweh strengthens. And... Oh. Satan is heavy today, man. Now, <laughs> let me see. Salah, yeah. Kanak. First, it was starting up the stream. Then there was the, the, the sound in the stream. Now, work is calling me. <laughs> man, man, he has to wait. The work of the Most High goes first. God, that's right. God, so, um, Ezekiel is a uh, Chazak Allah, which is the most high strengthens, and it says, a son of Buzi, and a priest, and a prophet. So that shows you that the most high works through the, the, the mouth of the prophets. That's how the most high makes his, his uh, judgments and his prophet, prophecies known unto the people through the mouth of the prophets, because he used Ezekiel to, to bring forth this vision that we're going to read about. The, the author of the book of his name, which is the book of Ezekiel, taken captive with Jehoiakim and exi exiled in Babylon, where he prophesied for the next 22 years. 
Council. That's a little bit of history on Ezekiel. Yahazak Allah is his Hebrew name. And he had gotten a vision of the Most High. And we're going to go into the, the vision. Can you go ahead? Uh, this is uh, verse 4. And I look and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and fire enfolding itself. And the brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as a color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Come. So let me see. When it says, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind. A whirlwind is what the prophet described to show you that it was a, a chariot. Let me see. Uh, let me share my screen. Flying, no, not a flying saucer. Uh, uh, it was a yeah, UFO disc. UFO disc. Yeah, so something like this, you would see. A UFO disc, but it was spinning within itself. You have all type of manners that Esau is, is uh, portraying this, but it came like a whirlwind, meaning it was spinning. You know, a whirlwind is like a tornado which spins, you know, around its uh, axle. Mm -hmm. So it says, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north a great cloud and that's what the prophet uh, used to describe these chariots because they're in the air you know and some of them do look like clouds they do uh, often what was it in these marvel uh, movies they have these aircrafts right and they mm -hmm. can um, uh, camouflage themselves with the background okay. you know and that's what these okay. chariots also, yeah, cloaking exactly. Mm -hmm. So, these chairs they, they cloak and they look like uh, clouds some of the time, you know, but then they can make themselves uh, manifest to people so that they can see what they look like. But often they look like clouds, you see. Yeah. So, it reads um, a great cloud and a fire unfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. So, it, it was spinning and it had the aura around it, you know, it had a, a bright color around it. And out of the midst thereof, a color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. So if you go into that word amber, amber color, it's uh, yellowish, orange, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the color that was in the midst of this chariot, you see. Go ahead. Go to verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Can you get me Psalms uh, 104, verse 3? Can. And also Revelations 10? Can. Because this is Psalms. Oh, yeah, you're quick. <laughs> God, this is Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh yeah, so, upon the wings of the wind? Yeah, so to further explain that the clouds resemble the chariots of the Most High, because the, the scripture just said, Who maketh the, the clouds his chariots? So those are the vehicles of the Most High. You see? To further expound on uh, the, the cloud being a UFO, the cloud being a chariot, being a, a vehicle to maneuver across the earth. 
Can you get me the Revelations? Revelations 10, start at 1. Okay. Then you read until 3. Okay. This is Revelations chapter 10, verse 1. Because and I saw, this is um so like it, because this is Apostle John, the John the Revelator, you know, he himself he also was visited by a, a chariot in the in the island of Patmos, you know. Because if you go into that word angel, as the brother is gonna read here, angel, it goes into envoy, which goes into delegate in a spaceship, you know. So that's that's what uh, the John the Revelator saw. He saw a spaceship. You saw an envoy, you saw an aircraft. You see? Okay. Can go ahead. This is Revelation chapter 10, verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and the rainbow was upon his head. Mm -hmm. and, his, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Yeah, so this is... Um... The angel, like we just explained, is the envoy, which is the chariot of the Most High. It was clothed with a cloud, like we were going into, you know, that it, uh, the, the chariots of the Most High, they clothed themselves, looking like clouds, you see? And a rainbow was upon his head, meaning it was arrayed with the diverse colors. You know, it's like when a king, a king has a, a crown, right? And that crown yeah. has different stones on it. And depending on how you look at his crown then you see all rainbow colors you see different type of colors you know because of those those stones that he has on his crown so this explains the glory of the chariot you know when the chariot comes it has different diverse colors you know it's majestic and his face was like it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire go, on. go ahead go on. first uh two and he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. So it says, and he had in his hand a little book, which is a little book is the scriptures, is the, the Bible, you know. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth, meaning he landed. That chariot landed and part land part of the the you know, when they land, then you have these uh, like tentacle like like feet, right? So okay. his partially his feet landed upon sea, and partially it landed upon the earth. Okay, so that was uh, the point with that. But if you go back to Ezekiel one and five, okay. this is Ezekiel chapter one, verse five. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Can okay, you give me Judges 13, verse 6? Can. Can. This is the brother Tazarach. Shalom. Yahu Bashem Yashai Bashem Raka Kadash Barakata. Shalom. Yahu Bashem Yashai Bashem Raka Kadash Barakata. Can. So. What came out of these uh, chariots that we are reading about here, the chariot, the whirlwind, that came four creatures, four living creatures, were, which are four, four angels. Those came out of the chariot and they look like men. It's just like the same with, uh, what was it, in the book of Tobit, when mm -hmm. Raphael, which his name is uh, Raphael Allah, which is the healing of the Most High, that was also an angel. And uh, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 13 and 2, it says, let me grab it real quick. You know, some have entertained uh, angels, strangers. angels on a strangers on a web. So not yet. Yeah. This is uh, Hebrews 13, verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels on a So these angels, they come in the likeness of man. But sometimes they come like a normal human, they, they look like a normal human, you know, like a uh, Rabbi Allah or, or uh, yeah, the like the brother's going to read in Judges, there was also an encounter. You got it? Uh, 13 and 6? 13 and 6, God. You know, this is Judges. In, in, a, in a peaceful way, in a normal way, but sometimes they're dreadful. Can you give me? Can 
This is Judges, chapter 13, verse 6. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of the Most High came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of Yahweh, very terrible. But I asked him not, not whence he was, neither told he me his name. You see? So they can come very peaceful, but also they come, can come very dreadful, you know, because they come from the Most High. The Most High can make them dreadful to look at. And that's one of the, that's how these angels came like. Because if you're, when we're going to read further, it had four heads, you know, uh, like a lion and uh, different animals. So the Most High can make the angel to appear peaceful or very dreadful. So in this case, these were some dreadful like men, you know. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Uh, Ezekiel, 1 and Ezekiel chapter 1 and 6. And everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. Yeah. And the feet were st uh, straight feet, and the sole of the feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Yeah, that's, and that's what these, uh, uh, Kung Fu masters and these ninjas were, I believe. You know, that they have... Um, the shoes. Yeah. And it has a clothing in the middle. Yeah. I had issues when I was young back in the days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I was in that Kung Fu thing back in the days, you know. Mm -hmm. I was doing uh, Kung Fu, Karate. And you had to have this. Yeah. That's what uh, was being described here in the scriptures. They were having shoes like that. I can't find them immediately, but you get the point. You know, it's like a, a shoe or a sock that you wear, and then you have a cloth in the middle. The ninjas are aware of that. If you uh, switch on the ninja, ninja, uh, ninja shoes. Let me see, ninja. Yeah, I think I found one. Yeah. Let me see, share. Okay. This one or this one. You see? Mm -hmm. like a foot. So that's how their foot looked like. See? Come. Verse seven. Mm -hmm. Let me read it again. Yeah. And the feet were of their straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like a sole of a cow's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Come on. So this also showed you again which color the angels are. They're so called black, you know. Because the color of burnished brass, which is burnt brass, is, is uh, dark brown, you know, black. It goes back to black, you know, very, very dark in color. It's not, they weren't uh, like the angels that these people depict, like what these um, Christians depict or what like the, the Roman Catholic Church depicts them to be like. No, they had the color of burnished brass, meaning very dark brown, you know. Okay. So called black. Uh, God. So the rest actually explains how they look like and how dreadful they were. So you can read it for yourself. And let's jump to verse 15. God. This is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 15. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth. And by the living creatures with his four faces. Come on. So with that, um, that, that, that man, that angel that came out of these uh, chariots, out of these vehicles, there also was a, 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 a chariot of the Most High with him constantly. Why? Because they were in one accord. They were in unison. They were um, 
they were yeah kind of joined together because they had one mind you know mm -hmm. just like how uh when they if you have your 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 a general and you send your troops to do a certain task they are not going to fight each other to complete that task no they're going to work together to complete that task the same way the uh, angel and the chariot had the same objective so they were moving with each other they were working in a team you know in unison go, go ahead first 16 the appearance of the wheels and their works, or Salake and their work, was like unto the color of a burial. And they four had one like, likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Yeah. Can't, so let me see if I can yeah, find that. But well, basically, it's just what it explains a wheel within a wheel it means uh you have a disc upon a disc you know that's that's how these uh, edomites always depict these ufos also mm -hmm. you know that you have a bigger wheel within or a smaller wheel within a bigger wheel you know so okay. that's what it means with a wheel within a wheel uh okay give me ezekiel 10 and 10. come Let this me is so you're quick. <laughs> Let me see if I can find <laughs> the color of barrel, because that's a, a greenish color, mm -hmm. which you see in that movie Independence Day. Let's see. Something like this. Mm -hmm. This. Oh, it doesn't show you the picture immediately. See green. Barrel emerald, you see? Mm -hmm. So that's the color of burial. That's what you often see in these alien movies that they um, shoot lasers with. You know, the UFOs, so-called UFOs, but they are just the cherries of the most high. Can't go ahead. Can't. This is Ezekiel, chapter 10, verse 10. And as for their appearance, they four had one likeness as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. Yeah. So that's a precept on Ezekiel 1, verse 16, where it shows you that these things that, that uh, you see in the movies, they are scriptural, man. Mm -hmm. They get all these things from the scriptures. How do they come up with the idea of a wheel within a wheel? They read these scriptures and then they 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 want to demonize us. They want to demonize the angels. They want to demonize the the uh, cherries of the Most High. You know, calling yep. them aliens and and that there's gonna come an alien attack and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. this is all scriptural. What they're portraying in these movies, man. Because yeah. if you go to Daniel's seven, it also shows you that the Most High he sits upon these uh, UFOs. And it also yeah. says it in uh, Ezekiel 1. Let me help you out. This is that. Daniel. Okay. Chapter 7. Verse uh, 9. Yeah, let me start with 9. Uh, it's a little bit dark here. Uh, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his, uh, of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. Yeah, man. So the ancient of days is speaking about the Most High. So the Most High, he has white woolly hair, 
and he has a white garment representing righteousness and his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire so the wheels that those are the so-called ufos you know those are the chariots of the most high that he sits upon because wow. in ezekiel 1 it says ezekiel 1 verse 26 and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of saf of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it which that man above upon it is the ancient of days which is the most high and you can link that with revelations it's a quick uh, side note yeah. revelations 20 verse 11 uh, this is revelations 20 and 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no more, it's like a no place for them. So, mm -hmm. this, uh, let me see, this is speaking about uh, Yahweh. You know, Yahweh, he's sitting upon his throne and he has uh, chariots underneath him. You know, so he is viewing the earth and the heavens from above that throne, from upon that throne that is surrounded by chariots. Man. It also speaks about it in Revelation 4. But going back to this scripture, the white throne and him that sat on it from those, like from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no more place. So that's speaking about the Esau Edom. Esau Edom is going to be done away with. He's going to be uh, um, pulverized. It's going to be like the Thanos, you know, when Thanos, he uh, snaps his Snap finger. His finger. It's going to be like dust and he's like, huh? Esau who? You know, nobody's going to know. There's not going to be any remembrance of him, of Esau either. Let's see. Okay. Revelations 4. Speaking about the throne and the, and the sitting upon the wheel. Revelations 4, verse... And it reads, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats, I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So it was speaking about the, the rainbow and the colors. You know, that's the, the majesty and the glory of the Most High. That's it's his, it's his aura that surrounds these uh, UFOs and his throne. Yeah. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of the most high and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like a lion yeah man you could read on but the point is made you know it's about uh Yahweh. He's sitting on the throne and all these uh, uh, angels and um, saints are ministering unto them, as it's also going to say in Daniel. You see? Okay. And to get one more point on the throne in Isaiah. Isaiah 6, verse 1, and it reads, In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord, Yahweh, sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So his aura, his, his glory, his majesty filled the temple. So yeah, man. Um, go back to Daniel. Daniel 7. This is Daniel chapter uh, 7. Start with 9 again. Now go to 10. 
10. Yeah. It's the first, first 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered unto him. And then thousand times 10, thousands stood before stood before him. The judgment was set and the book were open. God, so when it speaks about, you got the, the Psalms, the Psalm 68 on deck? I got it. God. I'm going to take it now. God, God. And uh, it says, thousand, thousands ministered unto him, which represents the saints and the angels. You know, like we were just uh, going into. You know, you had uh, the elders, you had um, 24 seats, you had uh, diverse beasts, which all these, these are the angels and the, the saints that minister unto Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Khan. Khan. This is uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 17. Khan. The chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Khan. So, the chairs of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. So, showing you that uh, the Most High is surrounded by angels and by these chariots. You know, like we were going into in Ezekiel 1, it says that he was he was uh, surrounded by the, the chariots and also by these, these, these different angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai. So, do you have the, you can get me the Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy uh -huh. 33, because the scripture is here making a reference to the time like in Mount Sinai. So we're going to read about Mount Sinai to get a better understanding of that real quick. Come on. This is Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 2. And he said to the, and he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir. Unto them, he shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yeah, you see? A fiery, so, like, yeah. God. And he said, the Most High came from Sinai and rose up from Seir, Mount Seir, unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints which are the chariots and the angels, you know, that also it's also spoken about in uh, Habakkuk 3. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a brief reference to this encounter where Moses blessed the tribes, you know, that the Most High was dealing with Moses on Mount Sinai, but he didn't, came, he didn't come alone. He came with his chariots. He came with uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the saints, with the angels, you know, but most importantly, it was the chariots. That's the, the representation of the glory of the Most High, you know, because they come with that rainbow color. They come, uh, uh, um, when they come and they land, then you see a, a burnt, a parched place, you know. You see mm -hmm. that it's, it's black because that's what happened on Mount Sinai also. That's you want have a cook? Wait a second, let me get Exodus. To show you that it was a parched place. Mm -hmm. Exodus 19, verse 18. This is, uh, Exodus 19 and 18. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Most High descended upon it in fire. How did he do that? He did it with a chariot, you know, because yeah. that's what they saw. They saw the cloud, they heard, heard thunderings, they couldn't understand, but great fear fell upon them. The, the Israelites that were waiting on Moses down in, the, in, the, in Mount Sinai. So because the Most High descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. God. So that's what happens when these chariots appear. You know, everything quakes, everything crumbles, everything, uh, it comes with fire and with smoke, you know. So that that mountain was parched through the chariot. Can you have the Habakkuk 3? Habakkuk 3 and 3? 
This is Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 3. The Most High came from Pima, and the Holy from, the, uh, from Mount Paran, Selah. Let me read it again, man. <laughs> because uh, Timon, Timon is a grandson of Esau. You know, so like it, uh, it says, the Most High, he came from Seir, which Seir represents Esau, Edom. And here it says he came from Timon. So it, it just shows you that he was dealing with uh, Esau, you know. He was messing mm -hmm. them up. Go, on, go ahead. Go on. Let me read it again. Yahweh came from Timon and the Holy on from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. The glory his glory covered the heavens. What is his glory? The chariots. Chariots. Just like how um, when Yahweh is going to come, Revelations 1 and 7, it says he's going to come in his glory, meaning he's going to come with chariots. And like the brother just read, it covered the, the, the whole earth. It covered the, what was it? Covered the skies? Covered, covered the heavens. Covered the heavens, you see? So that's how many chairs the Most High has, you know? And often, I believe this year also, in the beginning of the year, then there's always a huge chariots that, that is being spotted on New Year's Eve on or, or on the New Year's Day itself. Mm -hmm. You know, so the Most High has these chariots that are huge. You know, they they don't they're not small. You know, and if thousands of these chariots come, then the whole heaven is going to be covered. You know, it's going to be a dark and gloomy day also because of the chariots are going to cover the sun. You know, when they come. 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 Uh, Anything? Uh, not particularly. Okay, let's go back to the Ezekiel then. Go on. Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel 1 and start with 16 of 17. Go on, 17. This is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 17. Uh, when they went, they went upon their four sides, and they returned not when they went. Mm -hmm. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful and their rings were full of eyes round about them for. God, give me Revelations uh, 15 verse 2 to show you what the eyes are actually uh, meant by. Because the this eyes... Is yeah. Huh? God, this is Revelation chapter 15 verse 2. And it reads... And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harp of Yahweh. God. Oh, it's uh, not. I thought it was uh, scripture where it shows you that the eyes are the windows, but this scripture... The sea of glass, which is the firmament uh, that was mixed with glass, uh, so like a, that, with, that was mixed with fire, goes back to that when these ICBM missiles hit, you know, there's going to be such an explosion, such a, a, a devastation here upon Earth that we have to view it from outer space, you know, above the firmament to be safe. Okay. And them that begotten the victory over the peace, which is the NATO and the EU and America, and over his image and over his mark, which is the 666, which is his, his embargo, which is his barcode, you know, which he wants to put within you. That's the Haragma. And over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. And so we, we Yara Taza, are going to be singing for glory of the Most High that we have been saved out of this uh, destruction, you know, that's going to come upon uh, Babylon and the whole world. World, But going back to Ezekiel 1. Can I, can I add something to it? Huh? No, no, no. Yeah, this, this, this was the vision what uh, uh, John the Revelator saw, saw on the island of Patmos. Mm -hmm. So seeing that Babylon being destroyed. 
Yep. Carry on. God. So going back to that, that's right, man. Because um, John the Revelator, he saw the end time, you know, like other prophets also. But he he saw it, and other prophets they they uh, like the the prophet Habakkuk, you know, he mm-hmm. also uh, became sick to his stomach, you know, when the Most High was speaking. As Ezra also, you know, mm-hmm. they all they um, they feared when they saw that vision because it's not it's not no light thing. So that's why we have to be outside outside of the, 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 the stratosphere or outside the firmament so that we won't be hit by this destruction that's going to come. Okay. Because we're going back to Ezekiel 1, verse 18, where it speaks on the, the ice, and their rings were full of ice round about, about them, four, which that represents the windows. When you have these uh, so-called UFOs, the chairs of the Most High, they have windows to fuel the destruction that is going to come. You know, like we just uh, read about in Revelations 15. Uh, let me see. Emma, so basically those are the key points of this chapter. You can read the rest about the the dread of these angels of the men. You know, and you can read also about the glory. Let's jump to that. Go to verse 27. Come. Then you can see the glory that is uh, that these chariots come with. You know, the glory of this the is, most high. God. This is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 27. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within, uh, Salakia, round about within it from the appearance of his loyness, even loins. upward. Of his loins? loins. Of his loins, yeah, yeah. Of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, it had brightness round about. You see the brightness the, round about. That that's the the aura. That's the glory. That's the rainbow colors. All these uh, magnificent colors that you see. Like we were explaining, you know, when you have a crown, you, you see all kind of um, magnificent colors. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, that that's how these chariots come when they really manifest themselves. So that's the vision that uh, Yahasak Allah Ezekiel that he saw the prophet. Can go ahead. Gone, verse 28. As the appearance of the of the bow that is in the clouds in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard the voice of one that spake. Come, so like, yeah. So that shows you the glory when it speaks of the glory of the Lord. That's speaking about these chariots, you know, in their magnificence, you know. So that's that's uh, cut through. That's that's straight to the point. When you see the glory of the Most High, then you see it says this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Most High. So often when you see the glory of the Most High, it represents the these chariots. See. Um, so let's go to. Zechariah, because now we went into how they look like clouds. We went into how they look like uh, the color of rainbow, rainbows. You have a wheel within a wheel, you know, and now you also have cigar shapes, uh, cigar shaped chariot, also, you know, yeah. you have different kind of forms. They don't have one standard form. Gone. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 5, verse 1. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. Gone. So this one looked like a, a flying roll, meaning um, a roll is what is used to write scriptures on. You know, that's what mm-hmm. was used back in the day. So that's why this prophet 
Zechariah, he referred to as a, a flying rope. Go. Go. Verse 2. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying rope. Go. The so length like thereof. It's like, uh, like we were going into. Let me see. I think I got something like that. Uh, let me see. Something like this. Mm -hmm. This is a roll. See? So he saw something shaped like this. You know, thin at the at the ends of it, and in the midst it was kind of thicker. Mm -hmm. See? You also have cigar shapes, but this one was a flying roll. You know, and this is the Hebrew scriptures. Go, on, go ahead. Uh, uh, the length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Verse 3. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that going forth over the face of the whole earth. Go for on, everyone. Go on. So it says, this is the curse. Why is it the curse? Because these chariots, they also do damage. They also bring judgments of the Most High. You know, all these yeah. wildfires and things that you see, they could be made by these chariots, you know, because we know that the chariots bring, bring fire of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So all these wildfires, all these uh, uh, devastating um, things, natural disasters that you see, they can come from these chariots. So when it says, uh, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth, it means the curse, it goes into the, the, the bringing forth of the judgments of the Most High. Go, go ahead. That's right. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side, according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it God, so uh, let me see can you give me no let me see Malachi 4 for 6 okay. this is Malachi chapter 4 for 6 oh, no. leave that selected as a yeah oh, I saw it <laughs> yeah I see it I see it yeah go, on, go ahead uh, Zechariah 5 and 4. This is uh, Zechariah chapter chapter 5, verse 4. I will bring it forth. It the... also, it's like, that's how you see also that this is not scripted. You know, we are just going through the spirit, going through the scriptures and be like, okay, what's what? Let's see the precepts that we have and bring out the edification, you know. We God. don't uh, do this for filthy Lucas' sake or whatnot. We just go through the spirit, get the understanding through the elders and apostles, and then we give it in the same way to you. Go. Go, Go ahead. This this is uh, Zechariah chapter 5, verse, verse uh, 4. No, 5. No, 4, 4, Salaka. <laughs> I will bring it forth, said the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter in into the house of the thief, and God. into the house of him that sweareth falsely on my name, of by my name, Salakia. God, so it says the Most High is going to bring him into, into the house of the thief. And that's speaking about Babylon the Great. That's speaking about America. Why? Why do we say that? Because he is the one that stole a man. Let me read God. it again. Uh, Zechariah 5 verse 4. I will bring it forth, said the Most High, power of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. Because Esau, Edom, what did he do? He stole a man. Who did he steal? He st stole the Israelites. Israelites. So, so this is uh, Exodus 21, verse 16. And this is the judgment of the Most High for stealing a man. Exodus 21 and 16. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, which they did for us, they, they sold us, they sold our, yeah. our children, you know, they sold was that in Joel 2. They sold a, 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 a girl, a boy, as for a, a, a girl for wine, I believe, roughly paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what they did. And sell it him. Or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So this pending judgment is awaiting upon Esau Edom. You know, he's going to be put to death according to Yahweh Shemir Hashai, according to the, the Holy Scriptures, you know, according to the law. Yeah, so, yeah. and into the house, going back to Zechariah 5 and 4, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And that's what Esau Edom also do, does, you know, when he goes to his court, his court system, yeah. he uses the Bible to falsely swear in people. You know, and then they toss it behind them and then they start speaking lies. You know, they start, um, they use these scriptures falsely. You know, they don't have anything to do with these scriptures, as the Bible says. I have a God. precept for you. God. This is uh, Psalms chapter 50, verse uh, 16. Uh, but unto the wicked, Yahweh said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instructions and casteth my words behind thee. Yeah, you see, so they use the scriptures, they swear by the scriptures, but then they don't even use them. And the scriptures even says not to swear, you know, because you can't turn any hair gray upon your head. You can't, you don't have any might within you. You know, so don't swear upon anything that is upon the earth or that is uh, um, in heaven because, you know, it's it's all in vain. But these heathen do. These heathen, they take the Bible and they swear upon it. You know, they yeah. seek out iniquities. So this is one of the most highest iniquities also, you know. You're supposed to be put to death immediately for doing things like this. But the most high, he has a reward for them, you know, so... It's uh, still loading, you know, when you have that it's loading. Still, it's, still <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it's still pending. <laughs> so when it reaches 100, that's when the Most High is going to bring his fierce wrath and his indignation, which the word indignation right. means righteous anger. So the Most High is, is uh, mad with the heathen every day, as it says in the scriptures, mm -hmm. and he rightfully so, because these, yeah. these people, they don't know how to rule the earth. They don't know how to act, but they are in charge right now for us to be whipped into into righteousness, actually, mm -hmm. to be whipped into having faith that the Most High is, is the one that can get us out of this situation. He's the right. only one that can help us. How? Through these magnificent chariots also, like we are going into it. You know, yeah. we, we explained how they come with lasers and with fire and with smoke. You know, you, you see the damage that they can do, yeah. you know? So that's how these people, and mainly uh, this so-called white man, Esau Edom, is going to be put out of rulership. See? Yeah. Khan, go ahead. Uh, Khan. And it shall remain in the midst of, of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. See? Beautiful. It beautifully links mm -hmm. into what I just spoke about. Mm -hmm. It's going to consume it. It's going to consume Babylon the Great. It's going to consume all these idols, all these idol worshiping countries, but mainly Babylon the Great with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. What is used to build a city? What is used to, to make an, an empire? Timber and stones, you know, wood God. and stones. So everything is going to be destroyed. Mm, let's go to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3. You got it? Got it. I got it. Uh, Which see. verse you want? Uh, I think we need to save this because everything is good. Read the, let's read the whole chapter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Now let's go to the second king scriptures and we're gonna end it on that. Right. And Habakkuk three, we can go into that the other day, make a part three, and then uh, right. close it on that. So give me second king six first. First uh wanna 15. start with fifteen. God, this is uh, Second Kings, chapter six, verse fifteen. And when the servant of the man of the Most High was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, "Alas, my master, how shall we do?" Yeah, and so, he answered, "God, so lucky. So here." Elijah, he was uh, um, surrounded by chariots and by horses, so they were outnumbered. So his servants asked, asked him, like, okay, what are we going to do? Because seeing that we're surrounded, we're going to lose. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. Gone. Verse 16. And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Gone. So that goes back to what we were uh, previously reading, Psalm 68, verse 17. You know, that uh, the chariots of the Most High, they are uh, ten thousands, you know, that they are many. And Psalms 104, verse 3, also, you know. So it shows you that uh, um, the, the servant, he didn't realize that they weren't outnumbered. Actually, they outnumbered the, the people that they surrounded. The people. You know, mm -hmm. So they were with many. Go, on, go ahead. Verse 17. And, uh, and Alicia prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Yeah. So that's that's speaking about these chariots of the most high man. It was so the skies was full with these horses and chariots of fire, like we also read in uh, Daniel 7. You know, yeah. that, that fiery stream, that fiery law that issued out of the most high's mouth. So uh, little did he know that he had the most high on his side, that he had, that Elijah, he knew it, but the servant didn't know. So mm -hmm. Elijah prayed so that that young man could see it also, so that he wouldn't fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. God, so I, I don't remember if you get this precept. I don't think so. This is Isaiah 31, verse 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord, power of hosts, defend Jerusalem, defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. So this is the precept on what we just read, you know, that the Most High, he delivers them, he delivered them out of the hand of the enemies, you know, like yeah. birds flying, you know, so the Most High can use these chariots to, to uh, teleport, to transport you to a safer place, to uh, deliver you out of uh, such, such troubles. You know, so that's how the Most High is also going to deliver us out of the so like the destruction that's going to come through these ICBM missiles. You know, we have to be transported out of the firmament, out of the to to look into the sea of glass, to look into the destruction. You see, so that's how the Most High He can deliver you as birds flying. You know, because in these uh, movies like Star Trek, you see that. They these uh, UFOs they have a beam right and then they mm -hmm. uh, not disintegrate they transform they transfigure yeah. you know they yeah, pick you up and then they bring you somewhere else and that's what these chariots do man they can they can pick you up and bring you somewhere else you know materialize your your, your body somewhere else yeah. um, God so give me Second Kings two verse eleven. This is a uh, second Kings, first two and eleven. So I get my pages sticking. Yeah, I have it. 
uh, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven God, you see so that also describes the chariot the chariot of fire which is the chariot of the most high it can be seen as a whirlwind like we were speaking about you know a wheel within the wheel that also was mm -hmm. uh, um spinning and turning that's why it says uh, like a whirlwind you know so elijah he was saved he was uh, not saved he was he went into the heaven by a whirlwind by a chariot so the chariot mm -hmm. picked him up you know and then he was taken just like how yahweh shy it says in acts 1 that the same way that yahweh shy went up in a whirlwind in a chariot in the same way he's going to come back you know revelations 1 and 7. Mm -hmm. so yeah man we went through a bunch of scriptures uh yahweh you yeah, have been edified hereby that you got some the understanding of the chariots of the most how of the most high and how they work you know yeah. so we hope it was edifying and we want to give all praises honor and glory unto yahweh yahweh double honors to the elders and apostles of great mills for teaching us his truth and who rule well peace and citations unto the akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth spreading this word in sincerity and the truth Shalom to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.